Hey guys, do you like big bluegills? Do you like backwoods adventures? Well, in this episode, that's exactly what we're gonna give you. Now, how we're gonna do this is jump on the sleds, hit the trails, and hit some of those big, pristine backwoods lakes for big foreheads. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Addiction, the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. An addiction is not desirable. It is something that overtakes your life. What happens when an addiction cannot be stopped? An addiction is stronger than any one drug with only one cure. The cure is not rehab. It is not medication. It is not a counselor. The only cure for us is the water beneath our feet. The rod in our hands, the anticipation of that next big bite, and the camaraderie we all share. This is Fish Addictions TV. Fish Addictions TV is brought to you by Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear and the rest of our fine sponsors. ever have the opportunity to to go on an adventure to hop on hop on a bunch of snowmobiles and, and, and pick a, a lake way back in the middle of nowhere with a group of really fun people do it just do it just go Kind of throw a little caution to the wind and just, just ride trails, find that lake, hunt out these big fish. In my eyes, one of the toughest fish to catch is a big bluegill. They are very smart and very weather dependent in my experience when going after and pursuing those big fish. We call it lockjaw, but this trip, they cooperated. Well, what's going on? We're out right off a big flat off this basin, looking for big bluegills. Now, when we're searching deep holes like this, we're, we're trying to catch these bluegills suspended. And my favorite way to fish them is with a spoon. And the reason why I like spoons is because big bluegills like spoons. You know, the way I always start out bluegill fishing is a lot of guys go to the tungstens and small baits right away. I really like spoons because if you can get those fish active and going right away, and big fish like big baits as well. I mean, tough days, we downsize to the smallest tungstens. But if you start out with that bigger bait and see how they react, with all the tools we have to use nowadays, with our flashers, with our cameras, and all the tools that ice fishermen have, we can tell exactly how these fish are going to react from day to day. Now, this spoon's been down not very long. That is a beautiful, beautiful bluegill. Start with your spoons and downsize from there. That's what I like to do. Try it. It may work for you.
When you're trying to get out targeting trophy bluegills, it's not as easy as most would think. So being able to get out with the rest of the guys, getting out with the staff and seeing those smiles, those high fives and seeing big bluegills come topside, it was just a great thing to be a part of. Oh, there's a hog. Look at the size of this gill. Fills the whole palm. It's fun when you can get your mitts on gills this size. We're out here just punching holes, kind of working the edge of a basin here. About 30 feet of water, 35 feet of water. And that's the reward, just a beautiful gill. We're gonna get her back quick. Not huge, but it's a start. We'll go from there. Let's see if we can't get back down there and get some bigger ones. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. At Glacier, our goal is to build only the highest quality ice fishing shelters, constructed of premium materials that will provide lasting value and years of trouble-free service. See for yourself how our attention to detail and never-ending commitment to product improvement sets a Glacier Ice House apart from the competition and makes a Glacier Ice House the ultimate way to play. For more information, visit GlacierIceHouse.com. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. It was really good for me to get back out again. I haven't been out since the last time we filmed. We've been working some shows here and there. And, and to go out this weekend with these guys and get into some of these pie plate sized bluegills, I mean, when you set the hook and it starts to dig, I mean, you know that you have a good gill on. Oh, ho, ho. here we go. That's a, wow, that's a tank. See what I'm using, guys, is a orange tungsten jig with a wax worm. It's something that I'm very familiar with and this is a really big confidence color for me. Uh, what I mean by confidence is uh, a confidence color is that it's something that I'm extremely familiar with. Uh, it's been successful for me in the past and it tends to be what I go to out of the box and what I use to start fishing with. And if it works, it works and we're catching these monster gills out here on this northern Minnesota lake. So uh, it's pretty cold out, so I'm gonna try and get this one back here. We were, we were mixing in a lot of crappies and the big difference in the way they were biting was the crappies was just tension on the rod and these big bluegills would actually smash it like a walleye. Oh, it's a good one. Good fish. Now another thing to always remember when fishing panfish is today, these fish are coming. Good, uh, nice crappie, real nice crappie. You know, these fish are coming 
9, 10, 11 feet off the bottom. So even if you don't have a fish on the screen, we don't drop our jig all the way down to the bottom. And we don't do that because that's not that target zone. We want to fish all our fish in that target zone. And you can figure that out pretty quick. We first few fish that we caught, 8, 9, 10, 11 feet off the bottom. So when we're dropping down, we want to be in that target zone or just above that target zone when they show up then those fish that come are more likely going to be those aggressive fish. Now it's just something to remember to make sure you're just that much more successful. And again, always get back down there as quick as possible to get that next fish. So we're all kind of just sitting around, bouncing around holes, and all of a sudden you look and one person's got a fish. Oh, school's over there. So we all kind of move over that way, and boom, he's got a fish, he's got a fish, he's got a fish. Oh, look at that big mama. Holy smokes. You know, we've kind of had schools of crappies. They've been sitting a little bit lower, but these gills have been coming up just a little bit higher. we would be kind of bouncing around looking for the higher schools. And that baby absolutely just smoked it. <laughs> There's only a few things that get me fired up. KFC buffets and big gills like this. When you're with a group and you're on a nice school of big blue gills, it reminds me of the 4th of July. So let's just say it's the 4th of July in the middle of winter. Oh, 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 look at that big girl. I mean, it's a blast coming out here with all the guys. I mean, we get out for a weekend, a couple days here and there, and go after some of these big gills. I mean, if you're new to ice fishing, find some buddies and go out and try it for yourselves. And you've got a school down there and you're working them. What I like to do is stay on top of that school. A lot of times when you drop down into them, you'll scatter them. It's a decent gill. Now, the reason we do that, like I said, you drop down in the middle of that school, you'll scatter them. I'm gonna get right back down there at the school. And one thing to always remember when fish and pan fish, especially bluegills, they have really short memories. They get almost like a you're like a young kid gets bored with a toy real quick if you take it away. If you take that bait away and don't get it back down there as quick as you can, the school will forget about why they're there. So we, that's a lot of the reasons why people use tungstens or spoons, just able to get back down to that school real quick and keep them around. If you can do that, you're gonna have a lot more success and catch a lot more fish. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. Out here, speed is everything. The new Eskimo rocket runs fast, spins fast, cuts fast. Engineered from the ground up with an engine designed to run at optimal RPMs, giving you its fullest potential within its power band. The bulletproof all-metal transmission is geared to spin fast. The precision-based cutting head effortlessly cuts fast. Nobody sells more powered ice augers than Eskimo. Get assurance. Get reliability. Get Eskimo. No matter what you're chasing on the ice this winter, Acme Tackle has you covered. From the innovative Hyperglide and Hyper Rattle series to legendary Castmaster, Rattlemaster, and Sidewinder Spoons, or the all-new professional gray tungsten series, Acme Tackle has what you need. Visit acmetackle.com to check out our full product assortment. Acme Tackle. Rattles louder, glides further, and glows brighter. Get hooked up with Acme Tackle. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. 
We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. Cast or blast? Reeds has the best service, best advice, and best price guaranteed. Bemidji, Minnesota. Ooh, hoo, 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 yeah. There we go. We're getting somewhere now. That fish came up and sat under my jig and all I did was just tickle it again just barely moving it he came up boom freight train smokes it there's a nice gill <laughs> all right now this is just a sampling of what you could find in these remote backwater lakes now we were started out today let me get this dude unhooked Oh, we started out the day a little bit deeper and uh, getting a lot of crappies with a little bit of bluegills mixed in. I happen to notice up by shore here, there's a spear house, which tells me that guy's sitting on a weed bed or on the edge of a weed bed. So I just decided to slip in a little bit shallower and uh, sure enough, struck me a pie plate. I love these little guys, so much fun. This one's got some cool color to it. I'm gonna go back down there, see if I can get some more. Yeah. That's what we came here for. You know, the key to our success today is staying mobile. We got a bunch of guys out here in a grid of holes, and if we're not marking anything, we're always moving. Um, so the key is to get down to these fish right away because they're very, they're moving very quick. So you get down there catch our fish and then move on to the next hole. When you're out chasing panfish, one thing to always remember whew, is the gear you use makes a big difference in how you have the ability to finesse fish these these big bluegills and crappies and your panfish in general. I like to use a rod that's a light or an ultra light for panfish, mostly based on what we're using. Are we using a small spoon? Or are we using a tungsten? In this case, I'm using a small spoon and I'm using a light rod and basically what that light rod does is gives you the ability to control that spoon and also the tip of your rod we like to use these nice sensitive tips because a lot of times when a bluegill comes up to it, it's not going to be that t -t -t -t, you know like a perch or a walleye or something like that it's more going to be they're going to kind of come up to it and just kind of suck it in so you're not really going to feel anything you're more going to see it a lot of times your rod will just you know, unload is what I like to say. Cause when you, with your jig, it kind of, your rod sits there and it kind of loads up, just kind of just loads up just a little bit with that jig on. And as soon as that fish grabs it, it'll, it'll like unload. And that's when you know a fish has grabbed hold of it. Now, that's why it's so important to make the right rod choice when fishing panfish in general. So Mike caught one of the tallest fish I've seen in a while up here. Okay, do this here for you. Oh baby, come on. And just seeing him with that fish was enough to get me excited. 
as well as him. Good one, good one. <laughs> it's a good one, Will. I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's see your deucer for you. Oh, this is going to be a tank. Oh, baby, come on. Show me the money. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. dude, look at that thing. It's got to be 10. Oh, it has to it be. It has to be, dude. Oh, my goodness. He crushed that spoon. Hold this second. <laughs> We've been fishing for a long time. My hands, I can't. <laughs> I know, I'm shaking it. I didn't even catch this thing. I That's... switched back to that spoon. There was a bunch of down there, and I was catching all these little ones. And I'm like, how do we weed out little fish? Big spoons. Go to the spoons, baby. Let's get them back in the water. Yeah, the... yeah I'll get it back. Guys, change your presentations up. Big fish, sometimes like big mates. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. Guys, what I like to do when we're fishing meat, especially on a spoon, is see, I hook them right on the ends there. And, and the end with the little brown piece on these waxies seems to hold the hook better. So, but what I like to do just to make sure or to help keep that meat on there more is I hook two like that for the action in the water. And then the one on the third one, because I like to gob them on there pretty good. On the third one, I like to put it right through the middle. And what that allows is it just holds just a little bit better. So if that fish comes up and grabs those two that are sitting there and dangling, we still have something down there to keep them interested and get them to, to take that hook. These fish have been been a little more finicky today. Normally I would go with the plastic, but they haven't been as a, as aggressive towards the plastic. So I switched over to an Acme Castmaster. Fish back quick. It's an Acme Castmaster. I mean, you got three hooks on there, so it's a little bit better hook sets. Um, and they've been gearing more towards meat. So I got two wax worms threaded on there. It's been working really well for me. Good one, Will. Good one, Mike. This is what I've been looking for all day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, look how long that fish is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think this is a good fish to end it on. Oh, absolutely. Guys, this is concludes our backwoods, northern Minnesota fishing adventure. We put miles on the sleds. Put miles on our feet, drilled Miles holes. on our feet miles on the augers <laughs> that's for sure we've got holes drilled everywhere i hope you guys really had a lot of fun with us we had a ton of fun sharing all these big fish catches with you we caught a ton of crappies a few other fish mixed in this is what we were after and we got a few of them yeah oh. guys get out there do a little exploring Take what we've told you today and utilize that. Put that into effect. Yeah, it's a great, it's a blast. Can't wait to get on more of these with you guys. <laughs> oh. We'll get him back. Yeah. Guys, Northern Minnesota, tons of lakes, untouched. 
uh, you know, very few people have gone to the lakes that we were on, and we were on multiple lakes through multiple days just to find some beautiful fish, and we caught fish at every spot. These fish are awesome. Big bluegills, and they're some of the toughest fish oh. to catch. There's something about big bluegills. Oh, when yeah. you hook into one and you bring it topside, you've, you've conquered something. Oh yeah. These fish get me wound up tighter than anything I've ever fished for, so. <laughs> Guys, we'll see you next week where we'll be. We have no clue like always, but all we know is we're gonna have fun doing it and we're gonna do as much as we can to bring you guys a great episode. We'll see you next week. Ah! You got him! <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, giant, giant. Joy <laughs> Power! <laughs> Boys only? You're way too old to be a boy. Man boy. Look at that. See that? Oh, he's a man boy. They're all lined up for servicing. I gotta go. I got appointments. Yeah. I shouldn't do that because that ends up where I don't want it. <laughs>